Welcome. We're at the Boundary Dam Power Plant and Carbon Capture Facility. A lot of stuff goes on in this big building here behind me to bring CO2 out of the coal that we burn to generate power in Saskatchewan down to this compressed CO2 pipe. Saskatchewan uses a lot of coal for its power. Uh, we take out about 95% of the CO2 that's in that coal when it's burned and it's compressed down to an almost liquid state. What we're looking at here is the final product of a lot of work and technology that goes on behind me to bring this supercritical or highly compressed CO2 to market and to the Aquastore site. My name is Eric Nickel. I'm the Director of Operations at the PTRC. And today I'd like to take you on a tour of Aquastore and show you what we do with this CO2. The Aquastore site is basically a CO2 disposal well that we monitor very carefully because we have to ensure that every ton of CO2 that gets shipped over there by that orange pipeline gets stored underground and that we have a way of ensuring that that CO2 is going where we say it's going to go. Today we're going to learn a little bit about what goes on at the site and what equipment there is out there to ensure that that is done safely and effectively. All right, so remember that pipe that we were standing next to at the plant that went underground and comes out here at the Aquastore site, three and a half kilometers approximately straight west of the plant. And what's important about this site? Well, the main thing is that well over there. What you're seeing with this well is a very typical oil field disposal well with a, with a lot of extra stuff attached to it. Remember how I said we're three and a half kilometers from Boundary Dam? Well, this well also goes down three and a half kilometers to the Deadwood Formation. It's a Cambrian sandstone formation that's able to take all this fluid. So when we drilled this well, we put casing in, and that casing is like a big straw down into the middle of the earth. Within that casing, picture another tube, and that's what carries the CO2 down to the very bottom of the well, where it goes through the perforations in the casing into the Deadwood Formation. Sounds easy, right? But there's a lot more to it than that. We have to measure and monitor and verify all of the CO2 that goes down there. And we do that using a lot of these gauges that are on here to uh, maintain pressure and to ensure that uh, there's no pressure overloads. But also what's important are these spooled up fiber optic lines. These fiber optic lines give us a sense of what the pressure is at the bottom of the well and what the temperature is in a profile from the bottom to the top. Because the CO2 is so much cooler than the, than the formation itself, the CO2 being about 60 degrees C, and the formation is at 115 to 120 degrees C, we can really see by temperature contrast where the CO2 is going because it's cooling the reservoir, it's cooling the well, and it uh, makes for a very interesting way of monitoring what's going on here. So at the Aquastore site, we have a grid that's two and a half kilometers wide by two and a half kilometers long of 630 geophones. What's a geophone? Well, this is a geophone. It is essentially a ground microphone. It's for measuring sound waves or, or waves of activity within the ground. We have these buried at a depth of about 20 meters and, and at the other end of them is a recorder and a battery that looks kind of like this. And these things are always listening. They're listening for seismic activity that may be induced by the activity of injecting the CO2. But more often we use these geophones to um, gain a picture of seismic waves that we generate ourselves using dynamite on surface to generate pictures of the plume underground. So as we go around the site here, there are very many of these types of things called the sparse array. And uh, the sparse array has generated very many great pictures of the Aquastore plume. We're in the metering building, which is situated right next to the Aquastore well that we just saw. The metering building houses this loop of pipe right here uh, with various valves and meters that are crucial to, uh, to understand the, the flow here. This is the mass flow sensor. That's, uh, that's showing that we're injecting about 400 tons of CO2 per day. And my colleague Zinab here, she's looking at some of the uh, control valves and, and gauges and we'll tell you about those. Okay, so I'm looking at the pressure control valve, which is the main valve that, monitor, that monitors and controls the amount of CO2 that gets sent to the aquifer well. If the pressure control valve is open about 20%, that means around about 300 tons of CO2 is being injected into the aquifer well. This is the emergency shutdown well. In case of an emergency, this emergency shutdown well will be stopped by the operators at the plant. It's connected to the SAS power SCADA system, so there's no human intervention in case we need to shut down this valve. 
Okay, so let's yeah. just take a walk over here and go up uh, up the hill to the monitoring super station. There are about 13 super stations here at the Aquastore site. All right, so we're on a hill just uh, about 100 meters from the Aquastore well over there. And uh, this is a surface monitoring site. What's going on in the surface water, the surface aquifers, uh, the surface itself, and, and the air. Uh, Zanab, tell us about it. So this is one of the groundwater monitoring wells. There's about 20 of them uh, in the monitoring area around Aquastore. Uh, we monitor the groundwater through the, using these wells to make sure that there is no CO2 in the groundwater and the groundwater is safe for drinking. Not only these wells are being sampled through the groundwater monitoring program at the Aquastore site, but also we take samples of the domestic wells. So we work with the landowners to take samples of their groundwater monitoring wells to make sure that there's no CO2 in their groundwater. This is an INSAR reflector. A satellite up in space can see this thing and tell to within millimeters how high this is. And what's the use of that? Well, if through the process of injecting uh, CO2 over there, we start to uh, cause the ground to shift, we'll know about it almost right away. So we're standing beside one of the broadband stations that monitors any micro seismicity that may be caused by the injection of CO2. These broadband stations are powered by these solar panels. There's a GPS on top of this station and there is uh, recorders uh, that records the seismic data. And uh, there's also, it works with the internet, so it's connected through the internet uh, to a central location where the data is grabbed and analyzed monthly for any seismic activity. And this is a, a GPS locator. It's ensuring that we're not changing the location of, of the ground here in relation to space at all, but it's also giving the uh, GPS location of those water wells and of uh, any of the other equipment uh, monitoring that we have here. We are exactly 154 meters away from the injection well at what we call the observation well. The wellhead looks not unlike the one for the injection well, but it's covered by this fiberglass beehive, as it's called. We utilize this well to be able to view the reservoir from some distance away from the injection well. With this well, we can do various logging runs to view the, the passage of CO2 and the changes in CO2 concentration in the reservoir. We can measure pressure in there uh, and see what the reservoir pressure is away from the injection site. We can also hang geophones down there to gather seismic information and all sorts of other things like uh, gravity and seismic sources can be done by accessing the reservoir via this well. Over my right shoulder here is what we call the bubble tube pressure monitoring system. And via a port at the base of this well, we're able to gather pressure data by injecting uh, nitrogen from those cylinders right there and running it through an interrogator to figure out exactly what the pressure is uh, at this site. Why is this so important to us? Well, when we look at the injection well to here, that's a, that's a, a significant movement of CO2 from there to here. And if we know the exact properties, the pressure, the temperature, the, the concentration of CO2 at this point, and we know it where we injected it, we can extrapolate it much further. This site helps us determine how much uh, a million tons of CO2 will look like, how much two million tons, how much 10 million tons of CO2 will look like as it's uh, enclosed underneath the ground here. So as you recall, we started off at the plant with that tube coming out of the back of the capture plant and coming underground and up out here at the Aquastore site. I hope you guys have learned a little bit about what it takes to monitor a site like this, what it takes to assure the public of its safety, and what it takes to assure uh, the regulators and, and everyone else about the security of the CO2 that's underground here. We have a lot of systems on the go and it's all managed uh, by the PTRC and our network of experts who take this data in, we study it, we, uh, we compile it, we put it into models, and we represent it to uh, the academic community, to the public, to regulators, and to, uh, to Aquastore partners. And uh, I think this is a very important step in CCUS to have everything as open and as verified as possible. And what we've been able to accomplish here is one of the first of its kind in Canada and indeed the world uh, for being able to show the, the kind of information that can only be gained through actually doing this. And what we're most proud of out here is, is that we're actually injecting. We're actually doing it. It's not just happening in virtual space in a computer, but it's happening on the ground out here at the beautiful Aquastore site.